In just over 20 hours, polls will open for election day. Because Democrats changed the election rules four years ago, more than half the country has already voted. That means just under half the country will be voting tomorrow. So one last time, I would like to remind everyone why I voted for Donald Trump. Donald Trump was the best president of my lifetime. He created 7 million new jobs, more than three times what analysts had predicted. Real wages rose more than they had in 40 years. Unemployment reached the lowest level it had in 50 years. Unemployment for black people, Hispanics, Asians, veterans, the disabled, and Americans without a high school diploma all hit record lows. The median household income reached record highs. Poverty fell to record lows. The bottom 50% of U.S. households enjoyed a 40% increase in net worth. The stock market hit record highs. Trump's tax relief cut the tax bill of a typical American family of four earning $75,000 per year in half. For every new government regulation instituted under Trump, eight old regulations were cut. For the first time in almost 70 years, America became a net exporter of energy and the top producer of oil and natural gas in the world. On top of that, renewable energy and production and consumption also reached record highs. Families saw their child tax credit doubled and eligibility for it expanded. Trump improved health care, lowering the cost of drugs for the first time in over half a century, while simultaneously eliminating Obamacare's unconstitutional individual mandate. Despite overwhelming opposition from Democrats, Trump built over 400 miles of the border wall, causing illegal crossings to drop a whopping 87% where the wall had been constructed. During Trump's term, illegal immigration hit relative historic lows. For the first time in many years, NATO allies began to pay their funding obligations to the tune of $400 billion. He withdrew from disastrous foreign policy agreements such as the Iran nuclear deal. And through deals such as the Abraham Accords, he brought peace to the Middle East. Unlike his predecessors or successor, no new wars started during his administration. Of the past four presidents, Trump is the only one on whose watch Vladimir Putin did not launch any new invasions. That peace came by way of strength. Trump rebuilt the military to the tune of $2.2 trillion, established a new branch of the military to maintain American dominance in space, and obliterated longstanding enemies such as ISIS. Violent crime dropped consistently throughout his presidency. Taxpayers were no longer forced to fund abortions abroad. Trump became the first sitting president to attend the March for Life, and Trump-appointed judges delivered the greatest win for the defense of innocent life in American history. By the end of Trump's term, America was safer, richer, and stronger than it was before he took office and that it became after he left. It was great. I am so pleased to be joined by Keith Schiller. Keith Schiller has served his country in a number of capacities, in the U.S. Navy, in law enforcement, and then also as the head of President Trump's security for decades at this point. I believe Keith met President Trump a quarter century ago and then served as uh, his head of security, going up all the way to uh, the director of Oval Office Operations. Uh, So, Keith, first of all, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Michael. It's an honor to be on the show. It's a, it's a, it's actually a pleasure, and I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. Thank well, you. the the honor and the pleasure is all mine, Keith. I uh, like you. I'm a New Yorker. I'm actually from the same area that you're from, the Hudson Valley. And so, oh, great. I think for people who are not from New York, you know, they they'd heard of President Trump for many decades. I have been aware of this man literally my entire life. This guy has been a huge fixture for New Yorkers long before I voted for him in 2016. Uh, However, a lot of people know the professional record, you know, the business successes and obviously the political successes. I just went through them in the monologue. Not a lot of people know the man personally. You know him as well or better than just about anyone. And what the media have been saying for a decade now Previously, they said that Trump was great and they loved him, but for about a decade now, they've said he's awful and he's a man of terrible character and everyone hates him and he's a terrible person to be around. Right. You have the personal insight. Right. Tell us about the man personally. Yeah. You know, Mike, I just, uh, I think the media has done a great job at knocking, building him up and knocking him down. Um, The truth is in the employees and the people that he touches on a daily basis, that he, he reaches out, he... 
He has rapport with long-term people that have been in his employ. Uh, that's the first um, thing I would like to say is, if he was such a bad person, he couldn't keep people around him. There's people, and I'm sure you've, you've been to places where he's been at and you've met many people. Uh, they love him. He's a guy, a man of the people. He has he employs people from all races, all creeds, all uh, genders, obviously. And they are uh, people that w- would go to war for this guy. I've seen it out on the campaign trip year after year uh, where the people he connects. He knows how to connect with people. Um, we used to get off the plane and ride to the venues. And for miles upon miles, the people would line up along the road with the American flags cheering for him. He knows how to connect with these people. Um, and that's been something that I think most candidates don't have. He has a place in Scotland, England. I can tell you a brief story that uh, one of his managers who, after about two months, came up to me and said, you know, Keith, we used to be owned by another company. And I never met the former owners. He said, for years, this company owned uh, this, this establishment. He says, but here we are two months in. I've met Ivanka. I've met Don. I've met Mr. Trump. They know us by name. They, they ask about our family. He's a, he knows how to connect, and it's genuine. And that's the way I think why the people that he interacts with on the campaign trail have that same feeling. Yes, he's a wealthy man, but he's a man of the people. I don't care if it's his, his elevator operator, a, a driver, an attorney, all walks of life, firemen, law enforcement, military, which he loves. He's able to make that connection which I think most candidates are not able to do. And he's done that because he's employed thousands upon thousands of people over his, over the years. And he's been able to get them behind him, uh, make them feel this connection that is so unique to him. He's a very, very, as I don't have to tell you, a very, very unique gentleman, right? There's only one Donald J. Trump. He's a warrior. He's a fighter. He's a leader. He's a man that creates jobs. And he's uh, he's just very special. Um, and getting uh, in regards to the family, I have nothing but good things to say about the family. All great children, as you can expect, they're all expected to do well. They're very highly educated. Manners. Look at Baron, beautiful young man. Uh, Ivanka, Don, and Eric. Everybody around him uh, loves this man, including his obviously his family. But he's just able to make that connection with people that most candidates will never be able to do. And I don't know if it's because of his long, long um, history of building and making jobs, but he's he's out there every single day talking to the people, getting to know their families. So it's a special person that can do that. And of course, he's a patriot. That's the uh, first and foremost. Everything that he does is for this country, for the betterment of this country. And unfortunately, in Washington, D.C., that's not a popular person. Of course. uh, Yeah. So uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I I, I think everything you're saying right now is something that Americans have picked up on over the years. And and just they've they've received this barrage from the establishment media that tells them not to believe their lying eyes. When you say Trump is an original, he is. He's a complete American original. I I know some people in the political establishment had called for Mm -hmm. Trumpism without Trump. And I thought, are you kidding? What what does that even mean? You know, there's no Trumpism without Trump. Uh, You know, this this guy is a singular individual. And then you talk about that connection with voters. To me, the the moment I really saw it on the national stage was that moment he was he was boarding the helicopter of the airplane and uh, right. the wind blew a Marine's hat down. And he just right. instinctively reached down, picked it up, put it on the Marine's head, got on, on the plane. Right. I thought right. that that's not the sort of thing you can calculate. That's got to be just in your character. That has to just be in your behavior for however right. many decades. You got to go to goodranchers.com and use code NOSE. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. 
I do not love fighting through crowded grocery stores filled with mystery meat from who knows where, processed with all sorts of chemicals. That's why I trust Good Ranchers. You should too. Good Ranchers delivers 100% American meat right to your door. No antibiotics, no hormones, definitely no seed oils, just pure steakhouse quality cuts from America's farmers who share our values. Every piece is perfectly trimmed and individually vacuum sealed. Last week, I had a lovely, delicious bone-in ribeye from Good Ranchers. And then after that, sweet little Elisa made a lovely little stir fry with the sirloin. It's everything that they make is the absolute best. Subscribe to any Good Ranchers box right now using code Knowles. You will get a free Thanksgiving ham with your first delivery. We're talking about a 10-pound spiral cut ham. That's $110 value, absolutely free, plus free express shipping. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Knowles right now to claim your free delicious Thanksgiving ham. Do not wait. Just like the supply of conservative voters in California, these hams won't last forever. GoodRanchers.com, American meat delivered. On the point about the family, Keith, I'd love to get your insight because it seemed to me when the media were saying this is a man of bad character and, you know, people around him don't like him or whatever, I thought, look, I've met a lot of politicians. Uh, Most politicians have terrible family lives. And maybe it's just something about the job or it's an occupational hazard or I don't know what. But having spent a little bit of time with President Trump's kids at different times over the years, I've always been impressed by the kids, by how well they have done, how relatively normal they are given their eccentric upbringing, and by how much love and respect they obviously have for their father. I don't know that I've ever seen a comparison among other politicians. So tell me a little bit about that family dynamic. Well, you know, uh, they obviously they were not they learned that hard work ethic very at a very young age. I know Eric Don and uh, Ivanka as, as soon as they were able to while they were in university and maybe even earlier, were out uh, working at, at some of his properties or they had, they always had jobs. They always had to do something to earn their keep. And the, the father and, um, and their mom instilled the hard work ethic. So they're not kids that were born and just handed everything. They started at a very early age where they understood the value of a dollar. And they understood quality building and construction. They learned all that from their father, even especially Ivanka. She's uh, she's uh, a, a a great product of a great uh, father and mother. You know, very good person. Um, they're all great kids. I mean, I've interacted with Byron since he was uh, four, three, four years old. I knew Don and Ivanka when they were going to college and and uh, being involved with activities. Tiffany, I, I had a lot of interactions. All very, very level-headed, well-rounded children, extremely respectful. And as you said earlier, they could be kids of a, a very wealthy parent and be very dismissive <laughs> of your average voter, uh, an, an employee. They are exactly the opposite. I'll tell you a very quick story about Ivanka and the type of character that she is. She's a, a great person. Many years ago, she she was uh, flew into New York City, and we had one of my drivers had to go pick her up at the airport. It just so happened it was Super Bowl Sunday, so in the middle of the game, the driver leaves his home, his family, to go pick up Ivanka. That was his job, and he did it gladly. You know, he has a, as most employees, they love the family, so they did it gladly. So, in the car, Ivanka asked him. What's going on? I guess it, the topic came up that it was Super Bowl and he, and he left in the middle of the game. So because she didn't want him to miss the game and leave his family, she said, well, let's go to your house and we'll go sit with your family and we'll watch the game together. Because she knew if she had to drive her into Manhattan, it would have been another hour, hour and a half. Ivanka was kind enough to think of this guy. He left his family. She goes there, sits in this house in Queens, very large family. They are in awe that she's sitting there watching the game with them. But that's the type of person that she is. And she's like that because her father's like that, considerate of others. And of course, the driver and his family were so pleased and happy that Ivanka would would do something like that. But that's the type of people they are. And they're all like that. And they're not like that by mistake. It's like it's because of the parenting and the people that their two parents were. They're very, very strict on the kids, but great people of integrity. 
You know, this confirms something I've I've suspected about President Trump and the Trump family, which I really like, mm-hmm. and it drives the D.C. establishment crazy because they want right. President Trump to have a five bullet point manifesto on the back of a napkin and be some political dweeb who has some hyper uh, focused ideology or whatever. And I think I actually don't want that in my politicians. What I want right. in my politicians is a good gut, and I want courage, right. which is the prerequisite for all of the other virtues. I, I want someone who is going to make the right decision in the moment. And I think time again, you you use the example of the Marine with the hat, or obviously you use the example of Butler, Pennsylvania. This is a man who demonstrates courage literally under fire. You know, this right. is someone that you want to be able to trust to make those decisions, to make the, even, you know, Ivanka in the car driving on the Super Bowl to just know, hey, you know, the a really generous and gracious thing to do would be to go over and take an hour or two out of my day right. so this guy can be with his family. That's what I right. want. I want someone who instinctively is doing the right stuff. So uh, before I let you go, I know it's a a very busy time, Keith, but uh, before I let you go, what is your sense, having been the director of Oval Office Operations, uh, what is the sense right now, uh, maybe of the president or of his family, we are 20 hours out from election day beginning. I don't know, every day, I I, want to feel, I feel good, I guess I have this kind of brimming hope in me, but I just just don't know. It seems like everything's topsy-turvy. What are people thinking? Well, I, I can tell you, and I'm sure you've heard this all day long, it's, it's going to come down to Pennsylvania, right? I think uh, uh, Mr. Trump, everything, assuming everything is on the level and people get out there and do what they, what they have to do, he's going to win. He's going to win the Electoral College. He's going to, and this, he's going to, it's in the bag. It's a done deal. But unfortunately, as you know, you know, polls are polls and there's always some type of leeway there. Uh, it looks close, but my gut feeling in the people here, I'm down in Florida. So this is uh, this is MAGA country down here. They're, they feel that he's going to win, you know, and, and that's the really the only option for this country is if Donald Trump wins this again. He's a fearless man. He's a great leader. And under pressure, this is the guy that you want there. He's a smart man and most importantly, a patriot. That's that's the most important. He's going to do the best that he can do for the country. That's all. This is exactly what I'm thinking. You know, it, I would take a guy who is instinctively a patriot and who has right. a demonstrably good gut demonstrated over right. many decades over right. any nerd from the Beltway establishment who, I don't know, read uh, five more dusty old books on some wonkish nonsense policy out of a think tank. You know, this right. guy very clearly— uh, has America's interests at heart. He could have just retired to one of his many beautiful properties. He didn't. He's put himself literally in the line of fire. And it's it's how I I, I, I feel the same as, as you. I feel hopeful. I, I think he's going to win. It's difficult right. because Democrats changed the rules four years ago. But But I just think the story cannot end with this guy losing. This guy has got to win. So if you've not voted, especially if you're in a place like Pennsylvania, get out there and vote right now. Turn off this interview. Pause this interview. Pause this show. You can come back and listen to the show later. But go out there and vote. If you can vote early, set your alarm for tomorrow's 20 hours election day starts. Keith, thank you so much for taking time out of what I'm sure is an extremely busy schedule. And I look forward to seeing you I hope at some point over the next weeks and months in a celebratory occasion to uh, welcome back the 47th president. You can bank on it, Michael. And it's a pleasure. Thank you, sir, for having me. Thank you very much. That was a great, great clip. Now ring that bell and subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel, and we will see you next time.